So again, starting with your name, today's date, and the class period at the top of the page. Mm -hmm. And I want to do a quick reminder of what is a proportion. A proportion is something with an equal sign in the middle and two ratios on either side. Whenever we're dealing with a ratio set or a proportion that has a percent in it, one of these is going to have a base of 100. It doesn't matter if it's the first one or the second one. Our question, whatever the question is that's being asked, that tells us what our variable is. So we're going to use that information as we begin solving these problems. Put that away. The first question says, what percent of 126 is 22? Okay, so we're going to go back to this idea here. We're going to set up a proportion where we know the base of 1 is 100. The question is asking what percent. That means our variable is going to go with the, the 100. We're trying to find a missing percent. Of 126 is 22. Which of these is the part and which is the whole? Yeah, and I want to talk about 126 being the whole and the part being 22. It's not because 126 is bigger than 22. It's because of the way this is being asked. What percent, the percent is the whole here, right? A percent is 100 of 126. So this is relating the 126 to the 100. It's telling us that they need to both be in the base. And the what is saying, we don't know this, but we know this. Do you see how that question came about? Okay, we'll do the cross multiplying later. Let's move on to number two. 81 is 56% of what? We know the percent ratio from this. Because we see 56%, that's going to be 56 over. Again, my habit is to put the percent as the second ratio, but it really doesn't matter. You could set it up as the first ratio. 81. Read the way the question is worded. Does it go with the 56 or does it go with the 100? It goes with the 56. Can you explain why? There's one key word there and it's a very small word that is telling us it goes with the 56. It says 81 is 56%. It's telling us it's the part. The part is the 56, and it's saying 81 is that. It's the part of what? That means our missing piece must be the whole. You guys ready to pick another one apart together? Let's look at them. We'll come back and solve these later. If the setting up is the most important part of it, cross multiplying and dividing is not that hard once you've got it set up, right? 20 point or 25.7 or 25 and 7 tenths is what percent of 141? What percent means I'm going to have an x over 100? The question is what percent? We're looking for the missing percent. Look at me, breaking my habit. I'm going to set that one up first. Aren't you guys proud of me? And how do I set up the second ratio? The, yeah, the 25 and 7 tenths is going to be over because the way this is worded, 
the 25.7 goes with the what percent? It goes with the what's missing part of 141. That's telling us that 141 is part of the percent or the whole. So it gets set up like that. Try doing number four on your own. Does that help? Just try setting up number four. When you have number four set up the way you think it should be, put your pencil like this. Don't hold it up real high, just hold it up so it's not uncomfortable. If you think you have it, put it in the middle of your table so your table mates can see. Make some comparisons. Does your table look to be the same? Here's how it should be set up. Take a look at mine. Who got the first one right? The 17 over 100. Now, I had to look at this really closely and I teach math, so I just want to talk, I want to like tell you what went through my brain so you guys can see. Who, who did get the second one ratio right? Who reversed it? Okay, let's talk about why it looks the way it, it, it is, okay? This is 17% of what is 156. Whenever we're talking about a percent, the of what, that's the hundred, that's the whole. They're saying 17% of something is 156. That means the 17 goes with this. It's saying that that's the part. Let me read it out loud again and see if those of you who reversed it can see what I'm saying. 17% of something is 56. That's telling us that this is the part. It could be rewritten as 156 is 17% of what? You're looking for part versus whole. Feel better? Okay. Let's try number five. Try setting it up on your own. What's the question being asked here? The what percent tells us that my X <coughs> is going to go with the 100. We don't know the percent, but we know it's something that is a percent. Is equal to 46 over 107. We feel a little bit better? Okay, try number six. Still 
That word is, don't you guys start to see how important it is? The 79.9 is, it's the, it's the part. Of what, we don't know. What I can tell you is it's not very big. It's not very much bigger than 79.9. Because 99% .9 is almost 100, isn't it? Let's stop and let's solve this one. We're going to cross multiply so that 79.9 .9 gets multiplied times 100. I like to put them in parentheses when there's decimals so it doesn't look like that little hanging dot is a decimal. Because 79.9 .9 times 100 can be written with the parentheses is equal to 99x. Go ahead and multiply. Seven thousand nine hundred and ninety is equal to ninety nine x. What are we going to divide by? Divide by ninety nine. And I want to show I'm dividing both sides by ninety nine. This side is going to give us an answer. This side is going to be invisible one with an x. So we end up with eighty point seven equals x. And that makes sense, doesn't it? 80.7 is not much more than 79.9, .9, but 99 is almost 100. So with that, I'm going to stop. And I feel like you should keep setting them up. You've got, I always forget, this class is 10 after. I always confuse second and third period. So you've got about eight minutes. Work as a table. Try to set it up on your own and compare. Try to set it up on your own and compare. We'll deal with solving them later, okay?